I think it's safe to say there's been a lot of snacking happening in 2020 with people anxious, stuck at home. Um, so I'm sure that a lot of people have been indulging in some salty snacks. That's going to benefit our next guest. Michael Lindsay is the PepsiCo Foods North America Chief Growth Officer. Our Brooke De Palma is also joining us. So, Michael, as we have been watching some of the food trends this year, I am also very curious about your supply chain. We heard, for example, from Campbell's Soup yesterday that there is a cookie shortage in things like Milano's. And so I'm wondering what you're seeing on that front, um, because presumably there has been an uptick in demand. Well, first, thank you for having me. It's uh, fantastic to be here. And you're absolutely right. People are snacking more, according to our snack index that we track uh, on a periodic basis. Uh, more than 14% of uh, consumers are saying they'll snack more this holiday season than they have in the past. And they're completely changing the way that they're buying uh, snacks as well, obviously, with the growth of e-commerce and the growth of home delivery. Uh, our supply chain, thankfully, Frito-Lay is in a unique position that we actually control most of our supply chain from seed to shelf, which is a fairly unique uh, place to be in the, in the overall food and snacking landscape. So we've been focusing very, very hard to make sure that our supply chain has full robustness and the flexibility to meet that level of demand. We put more than 1.2 million cases into the market, uh, more than we had last year, just to make sure that uh, whatever consumers want over this holiday season, we can deliver it to them. And Michael, you know, over this course of the year, as we all continue to snack and as we edge towards that New Year's, those New Year's resolutions, are you noticing consumer behavior necessarily trend towards those nutritional category, perhaps? And if so, what does that mean for Frito-Lay's, you know, innovation? We're actually seeing both trends start to emerge. Both, yes, there's certainly a group of people who are looking at nutritious snacks and the ability to augment meals with additional snacking options that perhaps they hadn't considered in the past, things like chickpea-based snacks like our off-eaten path products or vegetable-based snacks like the bear, uh, the bear products that we offer. We're also seeing a pretty big spike in people wanting that you know, day-to-day comfort from traditional indulgence. People want their Cheetos and their Lays and their Doritos. In a, in a time of stress, we certainly see people wanting to go back to those snacks that make them smile and deliver moments of joy. So we're trying to ramp up literally across the entire spectrum. We, we, uh, our mantra is that we want to be always and everywhere. We want to give people exactly the snack they want, where they want it, and how they want it. It has always amazed me to watch the uh, the PepsiCo uh, innovation engine. I mean, constantly, every quarter, you guys coming out with new stuff. But just playing off what Brooke just asked, is there, is there a snack of the future that you're looking at? Is there a flavor you're really queuing in on? Uh, because we have been quarantining our homes for what, six, seven, eight months, there has to be some clear data that shows, you know what, these are some of the snacks of the future that we should be developing. Well, I don't want to spoil too much of our upcoming innovation, so we'll probably uh, avoid the specifics on this upcoming products, but there'll be a lot of interesting new things coming down the pipe. Perhaps the most interesting is actually the change in the way people are buying and the way that we can offer them the variety of snacks that they want. So we just launched during the pandemic, we launched snacks.com, which is our first attempt to do direct to consumer shipping of snacks. And because of that, we can actually offer a, a wide range of more than a thousand products that Frito-Lay offers. Because while we talk about innovation and new offerings, you know, again, we have more than a thousand offerings already in the market. And any given store probably carries somewhere between 50 and 200 of them. By going direct to the consumer, we can not only offer those and offer that in a way that uh, consumers will want to deliver directly to their home, we can then offer them the re- access to that wide range of products that perhaps they can't find as easily in their local uh, grocery store. And we're experimenting with our ability then to take products and take them from other parts of the world, you know, very fantastic flavors that we have in places like China or India or Mexico, and bring some of those flavors directly to our consumers in the United States to take advantage of a trend towards experimentation that we definitely see during this pandemic as people look for something new and exciting to bring into their lives. And, and Michael, you know, with snacks comes a lot of packaging. And I know that uh, since 2019, Frito-Lay has reduced their packaging plastic by nearly 8 million pounds. It's an amazing effort. How do you hope to improve that effort in the coming year? And, and would you consider Frito-Lay a leader, perhaps, in sustainability? We absolutely. Sustainability for us is absolutely paramount. As you mentioned, we've already taken a good portion of the plastic out of the system by making sure that our bags are compact, making sure that we ship them in an efficient way. We're continuing to push on that. We're looking at a a wide variety of options for film, both recycling and biodegradable over time. that will move us towards uh, towards a much lower impact on the environment. It's absolutely critical that as consumers get their snacks, that we do it in a way that not only is great for them and great for the the retailers that they shop at, but also great for the environment. We're fully committed to making sure that we're the industry leader in doing that. 
Michael, I, I want to push you on that just a little bit. I mean, as a as a mom to two boys who eat a lot of snacks, there's a lot of plastic in our house um, with various bags of chips and pretzels and all of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, what's the timeline here? It seems like the industry, I mean, even though you all may be a leader in the industry, it just seems as though the food industry is really behind on this in, in general. Well, I would encourage you to go to PepsiCo.com and we've committed very specific reduction amounts uh, by specific dates and, and we are fully committed. We're on track to deliver against those. And so uh, we're not being, we're not being uh, abstract in our ability to pull out and our willingness and desire to pull out plastic and other, uh, other environmental uh, in, input from our snacks. We've been very concrete in the amount that we're going to reduce in greenhouse gases, the amount we're reducing plastics over time with specific timelines against that. So we're trying to make sure that we hold ourselves uh, fully accountable to those. And to date, we're on track with those. So again, I would suggest go to pepsico.com and you can pretty easily find the, the links to the, those specific commitments. Copy that. Michael Lindsay, PepsiCo Foods, North America Chief Growth Officer in our book, De Palma. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.